How could Iran jam Starlink? If you've been watching what's happening in Iran, at least before the internet got cut off, you've probably seen the same pattern I've been seeing with protests and uprising. First, the government tries to control the story. Then they shut down internet. Then they shut down cell service. Now they shut down landlines. There's people I know and trust in Iran that I get my information from who I haven't heard from in days. I don't know whether they're alive or dead. And when that happens, people immediately go, okay, well, Starlink, satellite internet. Because Starlink is kind of like the plan B of the internet, right? No local ISP, no local fiber, no local cell tower. So when reports come out that Starlink is getting jammed in Iran, yeah, that kind of gets my attention. And by the way, this is actually a good preview of how Starlink will perform when China invades Taiwan in a couple of years. Now let's talk about how Iran could actually do this. Quick Starlink 101 here about what they're actually trying to break. Starlink is a constellation of like 9,400 satellites in low Earth orbit, and it also has a terminal that's close to the ground. That's the little flat dish that you kind of see. The dish talks directly to a satellite, and that satellite routes your traffic along the broader internet through Starlink's network. It's not magic, it's radio. And if it's radio, it can be jammed. It has the same weakness as any other radio system. If you ever been to a bar and you're trying to talk to your friend, you know, and you're talking to them, and there's a bunch of like girls at the other table who are celebrating, Someone's birthday! Oh my God, I love you guys! And they're talking so loud, and you're trying to talk to your friend about the ball game, and these girls are behind you, bop, 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 bop. They're essentially jamming your signal, right? That's jamming. They're overriding your signal to your friend. And if you can scream louder on the same channel, you can make it really hard for someone to hear. And that's basically jamming. Starlink commonly uses the KU or KA band frequencies for user links, meaning uh, we're talking microwave ranges, not like FM radio. Now, the simplest method to disrupt Starlink isn't jamming, it's repression. Before we get into electronic warfare, let's be honest here. The easiest way to stop Starlink is to make possessing it dangerous. Confiscate terminals, arrest people, threaten families, raid rooftops. Say that if you lose Starlink, you are an enemy of God, which is something the regime has already done. Starlink terminals are physical objects. You can't really hide them easily if they're in operation because you need a clear view of the sky. Uh, and if you're trying to use it regularly, every time you take that terminal out, you're increasing risk of being discovered. So even if Iran can't perfectly jam it everywhere, they can make it so risky that only a small number of people try, meaning fewer videos get out. A lot of people have said, how, how come you're not talking about this video or that video or the other video? It's because I don't want to be part of the problem. Because the regime might be trying to target and find people who are putting out those specific videos and if I repeat those videos or show those videos, I am helping amplify that signal from that person. And that's one of the ways that Iran might find those people who are putting out those videos. So I, I am too high profile to get these people exposed and risk their lives here. But that, that isn't really tech jamming, that's policing and oppression. Now let me assume, let's, let's assume that there really are some RF radio frequency disruptions as well. There's a couple of ways you can do that. So method one is sort of like a local bubble jamming near where people are using it. This is a more realistic traditional jamming scenario. You don't have to jam the whole country. You just have to jam the neighborhoods where you think terminals are active. Like you're not necessarily worried about like the countryside or about farms because there's no protests out there, right? You need to worry about stuff getting from the city where the protests are out to the farms if they have any Starlink terminals, but it's probably just easier to concentrate on the city. So if you jam the neighborhoods where you think terminals are selective, that would be a very effective method of repressing enough signal. So think of it like this. If, if this is your, your Starlink uh, antenna and this is your satellite up here, the Starlink dish is always trying to listen to a satellite that's whispering to it from a hundred, hundreds of kilometers away. And it's tracking each individual satellite as it comes over the horizon. So if someone just a few blocks away turns on a powerful microwave noise transmitter, kind of aims it at the sky to overwrite your satellite signal, the dish might now, now hear like, your internet goes away. 
That's jamming in kind of plain English. It's the girl at the bar who's talking over you. Now, here's the catch. Starlink uses a phased array antenna and narrow beams. It can actually kind of steer the beam, which is good for performance. It's also good for resisting interference. Um, they also have a heck of a lot of satellites in their constellation, so they're constantly moving. So that means, like, if, if you're Iran, I'm trying to find a jammer here. This is your jammer. If you're Iran and these satellites are coming over, you have to know where those satellites are to kind of point that jammer at it and try to overpower that microwave signal. Um, and you have to jam each one as it comes over the horizon. So jamming isn't as simple as, at least for these satellites, it's not as simple as like turning on a box and taking down the whole grid. To do it well, you need the right equipment and you have to be in the right place. Yeah, it has to be pointed the right way at the right satellite that's going over at whatever time. And potentially you have to coordinate this across multiple sites because theoretically someone could if they know the satellite pattern, switch to a different satellite, so you need multiple jammers for each satellite that's coming over the horizon. And that's why you often see reports saying, oh, signal's intermittent, it's degraded, it's high packet loss, instead of it's dead everywhere, all right? Another method is to jam the uplink instead of the downlink. So Starlink is two-way, all right? The downlink, the satellite, your dish, stuff is coming down. Uplink is the satellite, your dish going up to the satellite. People tend to imagine jamming the downlink because it's intuitive, block what I am receiving, but in practice, disrupting the uplink can be nasty too. If your dish can't get its packets up to the satellite, you can hear the internet, right? But you can't talk back so everything times out. The, the problem here is that um, you really can only jam that from the air. Uh, you could use an aircraft, although it would be extremely expensive uh, to keep an aircraft in the air all the time trying to jam signals. A better way, honestly, would be to put jammers on balloons. Again, doing this at scale requires real electronic warfare capability, but Iran does have electronic warfare units, and they've had decades of practice messing with satellite and radio communication in the region and uh, teaching Hezbollah how to do the same thing as well. The satellite, yes, is very far away, the dish is close, so it tends to be easier to jam the dish. If you're trying to disrupt the experience for the user, you know, you don't need to fight SpaceX in orbit, you can fight the customer on the rooftops, and again, the most effective method is to make people so scared of taking out that uh, Starlink satellite transmitter that they just don't do it. Uh, another question is, can SpaceX fight back? And I, I, to an extent, yes. Modern satellite systems can steer beams. They can shift frequencies. They can adjust waveforms. Um, they can adjust error correction. And you can update the firmware inside the satellite. And I would imagine you can for, update the firmware in the uh, transmitter receiver boxes as well. Uh, but you'd probably need a satellite connection to do that in the first place. We've seen Starlink adapt to jamming in Ukraine. Um, there's no perfect defense if the attacker is close enough, powerful enough, or willing to, to blanket an area with RF, radio frequency data, interference. There's also no defense for the police knocking on your door, right? And sometimes they don't knock. So anti-jam is really about raising the cost, not necessarily making it impossible. And what you should take away from this is if you're hearing that Iran jammed Starlink, the most likely reality is that some terminals still work sometimes. Some areas are getting absolutely hammered with jamming. Some people are afraid to try, which honestly is probably the most likely outcome. And the regime doesn't need perfection. They just need enough disruption to slow video and coordination. They don't want any video getting out of what they're doing because that's the goal, right? Not necessarily zero internet, you can't really do that, just not enough internet to be able to push out video of what's going on. And often that's all an authoritarian government needs to regain control of the narrative. I want to support the channel, grab my Intel Life t-shirt and bunker branding. Thank you for watching. In the modern age of progress and preparedness, one thing separates the professional from the amateur, appearance. That's why forward-thinking Americans choose Bunker Branding Apparel, the official uniform of those who get things done. Each shirt is precision engineered and field tested under rigorous conditions such as extended YouTube filming operations, Substack editorial duty, and the occasional internet argument. Designed for comfort, durability, and undeniable sense of tactical cool. So remember, citizens, when you're defending democracy, refueling freedom, or simply mowing the strategic lawn, 
Bunker Branding keeps you mission ready, wrinkle free, and unmistakably American.